I just recently landed a client who in the last 12 months made 49 sales, you know, 49 brand new spanking clients right in the business, but lost 54 in that same 12 month period. That hurts like, ouch. Because of this, I wanna share with you five methods that are going to reduce your churn. The fourth and fifth ones are a bit advanced, but all five of them should be done in your agency. <music> Method one, filter for freshmen. All colleges, universities around the world have an application process where they filter through all the people applying to become freshmen in their college. And they do this to find the students who would be the best fit for them. They weed out the ones who just don't qualify or have a high likelihood of not graduating. The colleges with the most relaxed admissions requirements also have the highest percentage of freshmen who don't graduate. Is that a coincidence? No, it isn't. If you don't filter up front, then you're going to have a lot of people drop off over time. It happens in universities where there's a fairly intensive application process, but if you have an agency where you basically will take anyone with a pulse and some cash, then you're going to have high churn. The issue with my client is that they're taking on a lot of clients that shouldn't even be clients. The reason they do it is because they cut a deal with another organization, a strategic alliance, and they are sending over loads of leads. So they kind of feel obligated to take them all on, and it's not healthy for themselves nor for that other organization. What I want you to do is have a low acceptance rate. You're going to have people apply to be a client of yours and you're going to have a low acceptance rate. Harvard has over 40,000 applicants, freshman applicants every year and they accept about 2,000, a little under 2,000 per year. That's about a four and a half percent acceptance rate. I'm not saying you need to get down to single digit acceptance rates, but should be pretty darn low. You should be the one saying yes or no to a client and not taking anyone on just because they say yes and they give you a little bit of money. Method two is concrete contracts. I only named it that because I like just how it sounds, concrete contracts. I know, I'm a goof, but there's this thing going around in the SMMA, social media marketing agency and digital marketing agency world where gurus are teaching people to only do a three month trial with all new clients. Go after very low end clients and do a three month trial for them. The reason they're doing this is it makes it easy for a prospect to say yes. Going back to method one, we want to be the ones who say yes or no. We don't want to rely on a yes or no from the prospect. These three month contracts, what they tell the prospect is, I need you. And we don't want that. We want them to need us. So these three month contracts essentially show that you're not very confident in your service. You're not very confident in the sales process, that you don't have a very strong procedure. You're bringing people in and saying, just, just try me out. Just try me out for three months. We'll build this thing for three months and then you can stay on. But what happens is most of them churn out before that three month period is even up. Now you're trying to defend a contract that's not worth very much. So you just let it go. You just let these people go. If they do make it to the end of that three month contract, the odds are that they're not going to continue on because they didn't get amazing results. One of the reasons that this happens is these clients, these small clients, when they spend a dollar, they need like $4 back almost immediately. And so they are under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. They'll take on an agency 
and just give them a try because they're looking for magic. And if you bring on a client that feels like I need to get magic happening in three months and you are new, it's almost impossible for it to happen. Or even if you are experienced and you know that you can deliver results, they may still have expectations of results that are far higher than what's actually achievable in a three month period. For me, I'm in favor of month to month contracts. I know, sounds ridiculous, right? But the cool thing with the month to month is they gotta give you a 30 day notice to let you know that they're leaving. And this helps you to make sure that you either offboard them correctly and that gives you an opportunity to potentially work with them again in the future or you get a chance to save the account. The reason month to month is cool with me is that it's not my only source of revenue. I focus on getting project income from clients. This starts off with strategy, then it moves into the very first project, which is typically the setup and you know, actually executing on what was planned in the strategy session. Then after that, we go into recurring services. And then even when we're in recurring services, we're always looking for new projects to do for the client so that if they ever decide, oh, we don't need that recurring service anymore, or we don't feel that the recurring service has the value, or we think we can get it cheaper somewhere else, they still get value from the other work that we do and are likely to stick around even for projects in the future. Method three, I call talk good. You need to have great communications. Here's a quote from David C. Baker. Clients notice deficiencies in the process long before they notice deficiencies in work quality. And the biggest process you have, as David C. Baker calls it, is your first deliverable is communication. This is usually where we falter as agencies. We don't communicate the things that the client wants us to communicate. I know way too many digital marketing agencies that have a monthly report. They give a monthly report. They're either doing SEO or they're doing pay-per-click or something and all they do is deliver a monthly report. Maybe they get the client on the phone and talk about the monthly report. Clients hate this. It's such a waste of time. They can just read a report. What they want from you is the ability to grow their business. So why not have conversations with your clients about growing their business? If you focus on what they want as opposed to just proving that you are doing something valuable and that's what most of these reports are I did work and it's not sufficient communication so they will notice deficiencies in your process in your communication long before they notice that you're not doing a great job with the deliverable matter of fact you could be doing a great job with the deliverable but they'll leave due to the deficiencies in your process. A few years ago, I realized my clients like talking to me. It's not because I've got great charisma or I'm just the coolest dude on the planet. Eh, it's pretty close, but that's not why they're there. It's that every single time they talk to me, their business and ultimately their life gets better. Sometimes those conversations are hard and, and they go away a little wounded but their life ends up better because of those. So they look forward to those calls. If you set up your calls with your clients, any kind of communication with your client, and before you send it out, ask, will this make their life or their business better? And if it is not a clear, resounding yes, then you need to redo that communication. Before you get on a phone call, before you get on a conference call, before you do any kind of communication with a client, you have to determine what's in it for them. And if you find that you don't have anything that's compelling, redo it. That's how you reduce churn, by improving your communication process. Method four is a long life. Recurring revenue was supposed to be the cure-all for agencies. If you could get somebody to buy once and pay you forever, then you're going to get rich. That was the idea because 
People are so frustrated with project work. Like, oh, we did a project, now the money's gone, and now we gotta go find a new project, and we're on this a hamster wheel of always chasing clients because we do a project and it ends and then we gotta go do another project. So let's go to recurring revenue. Let's take this idea that's happening in software called SaaS, software as a service, and do service as a service and have people pay us every single month for our labor. And it was supposed to cure a lot. And turns out it didn't. In a lot of cases, I've seen agencies make less money by switching from project work over to recurring work. From the hundreds of clients that I've worked with, the average is about 14 to 18 months before a client churns out from a recurring service. And these are called good clients. The great ones go on for several years, but most of the clients churn out in less than a year. The good ones last maybe a year and a half. And if you're only charging monthly, it takes like the first six months. And in some cases, I've seen some margins where it takes nearly a year before the agency breaks even, and then they start making some money after that. And if that's happening, you're going to always be chasing more and more clients because you're going to need cash flow just to keep you in operations. Depending on cash flow to pay last month's bills so that you can stay in business is a horrible way to run a company. What if you built a long client lifespan into your business without the client feeling like they're committing to a never ending expense? Most of your recurring revenue services that exist in digital agencies and, well, agencies all over the place, feel like expenses to a client, a never-ending expense. They agree to this monthly deal and after a while, they kind of get tired of paying that monthly expense. And at some point, a bean counter comes along and says, hey, you could get that service cheaper by going over here and saving some money and they just drop it. They drop you based on price and not based on results. And that happens with labor all the time. One of the first businesses that I ever encountered that built a long lifespan into their client relationship was Strategic Coach. Dan Sullivan has a question that is the foundation to Strategic Coach. Let me read this to you. I wanna get that word by word because the wording is so crucial to the client seeing Strategic Coach as a long-term commitment without feeling like it's a never-ending expense. If we were having this discussion three years from today and you were looking back over those three years, what has to have happened in your life both personally and professionally for you to feel happy with your progress. This is important. The key here is looking at the next three years, but you're looking back on it. So now you're in a future mindset. You're, you've been pre-framed to look at today's solution, joining Strategic Coach, is based on what you've progressed over three years, not where you're at today and making a financial decision today, but based on that growth over three years. You get the client to describe to you what a successful outcome looks like over the course of years, not just a single project, not just the three month contract, but over the course of three years. So they're thinking about this, they're going to base your solution off of the future and not how they perceive today. The interesting thing that happens here is that when they evaluate a one-year commitment to strategic coach, it's based upon a bigger number. So they are sort of price anchored on the number of years. So one year does not sound so bad. It's a commitment I can make. And so they make that one-year commitment but they're pre-framed to continue on for three years. So it's sort of like uh, year one is phase one in their progress, and uh, year two, phase two in their progress, and year three, and so on. And then when they're going through Strategic Coach, they're getting groomed for year four, five, and six because it's all about growing them, growing their business. Every discussion is about growing the business. So that framework makes it easy 
for a client to stay for a long time without feeling like they're committing to a never-ending expense. Method five, probably the most important method, is grow the account. It is very important that you are always working with your client to understand, truly understand, their needs and their objectives so that you can fulfill needs today and help them grow into their future. If you've got one service or you do one project, like a lot of web designers, they do one project and then they're done. They're just out of their client's life. Well, if you only have one service, one project, it's instant churn. You're always going to have people churn out. Your clients are growing and you should be growing with them. I've got a client who just lost their largest account and they thought it was on price because they felt that they were already charging a lot of money for this account. Turns out when they were talking to the client after they lost the account, Turns out they just weren't charging enough. The client wanted to be charged more. The client was wanting them to grow the service. The client wanted more attention, wanted more things happening inside of his business. And my client just never communicated it. My client never felt that they should try to grow it because they felt that they were already expensive. It was their mentality that lost this account. So you have to have a grow the account mentality. You should never rely on simply doing a single recurring service. You need to have your recurring service, make sure it's built into your business, but always have projects. Always come in and solve new needs. Always have new projects to achieve new objectives for your clients. This is going to make sure that you grow every single account. And it keeps us in a spot where we can have just a handful of accounts, uh, 10 to 12, you know, little hinges swing big doors. We can just have a small number of accounts and start making more and more money because we just help them grow and grow and grow and we grow with them. Here's a fact, clients are far less likely to churn if you are always finding new ways to serve them. I hope you put these five methods into action today inside of your agency. And don't churn out, subscribe, ring that notification bell, like, subscribe, share, do all the socials, and we'll see each other in the next video.